Good morning. For those of you who do not know me, especially those first-time visitors, Jeremy would tell you, be sure and come back one more time so you can hear a real preacher. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, I love to preach. Uh, I love the opportunity when uh, Jeremy and... Uh-oh. I died, didn't I? No? Still there? Uh, still there. Uh, all right. Uh, this morning, uh, I, I have a question I want to ask you. Have you ever had your world turned upside down? Have you ever had your world turned upside down? As you look back over your life, I'm sure there are, are, are many things when that question's asked that come to mind. Uh, many things. I, 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 as I was making preparations for this sermon, I began to think about the times that my life had been turned upside down. Uh, and, and I tell you, uh, for those of you, I, I'm wearing a, a back brace right now because uh, of, of back surgery. I had three vertebras uh, uh, tied together, welded together, and so... Uh, I don't bend as good as I used to, but I'm 65 years old, and so I don't bend as good as I used to. <laughs> but I look back and think of the time in my life that probably uh, changed my life more than anything, and it was the time that I surrendered to the ministry. The time uh, was 1983, uh, I was 29 years old and, and God began to put on my heart that He wanted me to preach. And I began to argue with Him that look, I'm a, I'm a farm boy, a ranch boy. Uh, uh, I don't know anything about the Scripture. I've been in Sunday school. I knew John 3.16. Uh, I had been raised up uh, going to church but uh, not in my opinion Preacher material. Do you hear where I'm coming from? Uh, many of you, if, if Jeff were to ask you uh, uh, next week, I want you to come up and give the sermon, would you panic? I'm telling you, I was in panic mode. Panic mode. God, you have made a terrible mistake. I'm telling you, uh, my world was turned upside down, but it didn't just affect me. It affected all those around me. It affected my wife, 46 years, the 15th of June. Thank you, Lord. It affected my children. Uh, they were going to be preacher's kids, and, and I'm telling you, uh, uh, I don't know how many preacher's kids you've grown up around, but mine was typical. I'm sure Cody was perfect, wasn't he? No. <laughs> it affected my parents. My dad, uh, my dad, probably his life was affected most. My dad uh, was so worried, so terrified that his baby boy uh, uh, was was going into the ministry. Hey, he said, "How are you going to make a living? Hey, hey, how, how are you going to feed your family? How are you going to take care of them?" And he got so worked up that he had a nervous breakdown. Sometimes when your world is turned upside down, it doesn't just affect you, does it? It affected all those around you. This morning, I want us to look at a scripture in Acts chapter 17 where Paul is accused of turning the world upside down. Turning the world upside down. Acts chapter 17, verse 1 says, Paul and Silas travel through the towns of Amphipolis, and Apollonia, and came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. Now let me give you a little bit of background. 
uh, uh, the last verse of verse 16 says, uh, When Paul and Silas left prison, they returned home from Lydia, and they were met with believers and encouraged them once more, and they left town. Uh, what had happened, Paul and Silas had been put in prison because uh, there was this young woman that was going around uh, uh, pointing at them when they, whenever they would preach and say, uh, they're preaching about the Jesus. They're preaching Jesus. They're preaching Jesus. Uh, and it was, it was uh, uh, causing a more, these men are servants of the Most High God and they come to tell you about Jesus. I'm going to tell you, it says the whole city was in an uproar. The whole city. So Paul and Silas were put in prison for telling people about Jesus. Telling people that he was the Messiah. Telling people he was the one to come. The one that they needed to look to. I'm telling you today, he's the same as he always was. He's the one you need to look to and listen to. Verse 2 says, as, Paul, as was Paul's custom, he went to the synagogue service and for three Sabbaths in a row, he used the scriptures to reason with the people. He explained the prophecies and proved and proved that the Messiah must suffer and rise from the dead. He said, this Jesus I'm telling you about is the Messiah. Some of the Jews who were listening were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas along with many God-fearing Greek men and quite a few prominent women. But some of the Jews were jealous. So they gathered some of the troublemakers from the market to form a mob and start a riot. They attacked the home of Jason, searching for Paul and Silas so that they could drag them out to the crowd. Not finding them, they dragged out Jason and some of the other believers instead and took them before the city council. Paul and Silas has... has have caused trouble all over the world, they shouted. And now they are disturbing our city too. I asked uh, John if he would put the next scripture up uh, in the New King James Version because I like what it says about turning our world upside down. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brethren to the rulers of the city crying out, these who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you for this people that you have assembled here today. And Lord, I know that there's not one person here that is by accident. They are here because they have a divine appointment with you. And I pray, God, that our ears will be open that our eyes will see, and God, that we will decide that we are going to follow you and we are going to serve you. And I pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. We are very fortunate to live in a country that we can freely come and gather in a place like this. Nobody can tell us, no, you can't go to Riding the River, back, Riding the River uh, Fellowship. I almost said Baptist Church. Uh, Y'all don't tell Jeremy I said that, okay? <laughs> Jer Jeremy picks on me a little, but you know what? I, I'm proud of my Baptist heritage, and, uh, and, and the reason I'm proud of it is because uh, I came to know Jesus Christ because of my raising. And I don't care what, uh, I don't care what denomination you uh, are affiliated with or were affiliated with it before you came to ride in the river. But uh, if you know Jesus Christ, then thank God for your heritage. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. I got that out of the way. Got it, uh, 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 may, may, maybe Jeremy won't get on me too bad. <laughs> but we are blessed. We are fortunate 
to live in the United States of America. It's a mess. It's a mess. I, I'm telling you, I've never seen our country in this much uh, disruption. I've never seen it uh, like it is today. But I don't want to live anywhere else. Thank you that I have the freedom to come and worship the Lord right here. It has not always been that way, right? Not always been that way. If it hadn't have been for a few, uh, a few loyal men risking their lives, and guess what, folks? Turning their world upside down, then we would not have the liberty, the freedom to come and gather like we do today. Thank God for those men. Uh, thank God religion uh, uh, was one of the reasons, one of the main reasons uh, uh, that, that they wanted to separate. They wanted to come and form an independent uh, nation. Uh, they had a canned religion. Anybody here uh, uh, go to the store and buy canned goods? This is what you do. Yes, we do. Well, I remember, I remember when my mom and I remember when my grandma used to can fresh vegetables. Anybody else remember that? Yeah, uh, yeah. Boy, I tell you, it was work, wasn't it? But I'm telling you, there is a, a, a distinct difference in taste. Uh, I'm telling you, if you've not ever had fresh green beans or fresh uh, squash or fresh okra, uh, then you don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm telling you, there is a difference. And, and that's what these gentlemen, uh, these men and women who came uh, to this country to start a new life, that's what they were. Uh, they, they didn't want a canned religion. They didn't want canned uh, uh, Christianity. They wanted to be able to worship the Lord in the way they, they did. Yeah, canned food is easy. You just open it and pour if you can run the can opener. Sometimes that's challenging, isn't it? <laughs> but I'm telling you, that's what these men did. They didn't want that. Paul was in a similar situation. Paul, uh, uh, he was there uh, uh, turning his world upside down because religion was do's and don'ts, wasn't it? There was a list. Uh, did you know that the, the, the uh, religious leaders of that day had taken the Ten Commandments and they had added 613 new commandments? Here's what you live by. Here's a list. You know what? In our lives, we do the same thing, don't we? Uh, sometimes we say, well, I can't do that. I did grow up in a Baptist church. And you can't dance, you can't drink, you can't smoke, you can't dip. You can't, you can't, you can't. Well, guess what I found out? I have freedom in Christ. I have freedom in Christ. I got my snuff right here. <laughs> I did... Remember to go out and spit it out so I wouldn't be spewing snuff stream all over everybody. All right? I have to give you a disclaimer there. My, the pastor that I surrendered to preach under said, Joel, you can't be a preacher if you dip snuff. You know what I did? I conformed. I quit dipping for two whole years. And with the money I saved from my snuff, I bought me a new deer rifle. And then I was going deer hunting, I stopped and bought me a can of snuff. <laughs> Paul, when he came to Thessalonica, uh, uh, he was accused of turning the world upside down for the cause of Christ in just three weeks. Three weeks. Now you remember, uh, Paul uh, became uh, an apostle. Paul... Literally walked with Jesus, talked with Jesus. It was, he was not with the other 12 apostles who leavened 
uh, carried on what Jesus taught. But Paul, Paul uh, had been with Jesus and he preached Jesus. He preached Him crucified. He preached Him uh, suffering. He preached Him rising from the dead. He preached Him conquering death. He preached that if we gave our lives to Him, we too could be saved. Paul changed his world. Paul changed his world. Uh, revival broke out. I'm telling you, uh, you've heard of revival. You've heard of spiritual awakening. All that was happening in the, the town of Thessalonica, in the church there, upside down. Paul and his, and his associates, they turned the world upside down. I wonder, I wonder if we here at Ryburn, Riding the River would like to see our world turned upside down for Christ. Would you? Would you? One guy would. I heard an amen. How about the others? Yeah, yeah, we would. We would love to see, uh, I, I tell you what, it would fix a lot of the problems of this nation, wouldn't it? It would fix them. I want you to notice something that I read in these scriptures. I want you to notice where Paul began his work there in Thessalonica. The scripture says, for three Sabbaths, he opened up the Scripture and he began to explain the Scriptures. And where did he start? He started in the church. He started in the church. He started in the synagogue. Guess what? He pissed a few people off, didn't he? Made some folks mad. But the Holy Spirit began to deal with those people. Not all of them got mad. Some of them got right with God, didn't they? Some of them got saved. I'm telling you, in a congregation of this many people, there's some people here that have never given their lives to Jesus Christ. And I want you to know, you can today, right where you are. But there's a multitude of us that have been Christians for a long time that, guess what? Uh, we could do better, right? We could do better. Now, we can't do better on our own, but we can through the help of the Lord and the Holy Spirit. We can. I'm telling you, Paul, he began to open up the Word of God and he began to tell them uh, uh, what the Scriptures meant. And he began to tell them Jesus has to suffer. Uh, Jesus has to suffer. And guess who he's suffering for? He's suffering for those people of Thessalonica and everywhere that Paul went. But guess what? The Scripture's telling me today, He suffered for us. For us. He began to explain, opening up the Word. He said, Jesus is going to have to die. But let me tell you, He's dying in your place. He's dying for a reason. For a cause. He's dying to pay for your guilt. For your sin. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but what? Have everlasting life. So you see, Jesus' death bought and paid for sin in full. S-I-N, not for my sins, yes, for my sins, but not just my sins, but for S-I-N, all sin. All sin is bought and paid for forever until He comes back. It's bought and paid for. Whether you believe in Jesus or not, whether you receive Him as your Savior or not, your sin is paid for. In full. He began to open up the scripture and say, guess what? He ain't going to stay dead. He's going to come back to life. Not only did he suffer and die, 
but he rose again from the dead. And Paul began to tell this to the people that had been listening to the do's and the don'ts and the 613 plus 10 laws that they had. And they began to realize, hey, he's right. He's right. They began to get a grasp, not because Paul was such a magnificent teacher, but because God is such a mighty God. Because the Holy Spirit began to teach for him. Because they began to hear with different ears. And that's what God wants from us here in this church. Opening up the scriptures to me, to each one of you, us hearing from God. And then God can do a mighty work in this place. Lee told us about, she mentioned the building project out here. Man, isn't that great? Isn't it great, man? I, I tell you, uh, I have been amazed at the hand of God on riding the river. I have just been amazed at how many people God has brought together, and I've been even more amazed at how many times uh, the baptismal waters have been rippled uh, because people have come to know Jesus Christ. That thrills my heart, doesn't it yours? Uh, because their lives are changed forever. But wouldn't you like to see God continue that work? Yeah, that's why we got a big old auditorium being built out here and more Sunday school rooms and, and things to that effect. We want to see growth. Now I know uh, numbers don't mean anything. It's changed lives that means something. So would you like, I want to see a raise of hands. Would you like to see God do a work here and double the size of riding a river? That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Not so that we could say we're running a thousand people out there at riding a river, uh, uh, cowboy church, cowboy fellowship. No, that's not the reason. Because what? we're looking for is seeing a thousand people that's lives are changed. <laughs> lives are literally different. They're upside down from what they once was. Let me tell you a little secret. Paul was not, uh, he may have been accused of turning the world upside down for Christ, but really Jesus was turning it right back the way it ought to be. He is turning it right side up. Right side up. Sometimes when we get our upside down moments, things that change, uh, God calls you to the ministry. Well, I'm telling you, it ain't all bad because God's really straightening things out. You see, these folks that Paul was talking to they got serious. They got serious about the Lord. And they began to tell others what they had heard. They began to see their life changed and began to have a desire for others' lives to be changed because of what happened to them. You see, when God turns the church upside down, Things start happening. Things start happening. They happen to bring glory and honor to Him. And guess what? Somebody might accuse you uh, of turning your world upside down. Uh, uh, sometimes I think that's why we don't do more. Sometimes I think that's why we don't. is because we're afraid that... Somebody might accuse me of being a Jesus nut. Religious freak. How many of you like the weather we're having right now? 
Man, I tell you, June the 30th and it's cool and it's rainy. It, it just don't happen like that this very often in Texas, right? But with that said, how many of you, I'm right there, I'm telling you, I'm raising my hand right now. How many of us gripe because it rained and now we got mud on our shoes? There it is. How many of us said, okay, God, that's enough rain. I'm tired of it. I, I, I've, I've been hearing folks say this. I am so tired of this thinking rain. I'm telling you, there ain't no such thing as thinking rain, <laughs> especially in Texas. But that's the way we are. We pray, God, use me. We pray, God, uh, 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 let me let me be your servant. Let me do something for you. And then, but God, don't do this. Don't do that. You see, that's what God wants from you. God wants you to be his servant. And guess what? Yeah, he called a dumb old farm boy, ranch boy, uh, into the ministry and if he can use me I promise you he can use anybody he can use anybody Paul preached to those folks and their lives were changed he opened up the scripture and guess what they understood don't be afraid of causing an uproar don't let somebody uh, rob you from that. Be what God wants you to be. Be who you are. Be in the profession you are. The calling you have. But just serve the Lord through that. Sign up sheet back here. Back here so that you can sign up and say, you know what? I'm willing to help with that new project. Even if it means picking up a broom and sweeping the floor. Everybody can do that. You may be a fantastic carpenter. Uh, and you may, may be able to put uh, uh, your touch in here. I think of Ken. And, and, and when I look around here, God just brought him here and, got, and Ken went to work. He didn't do it so that you'd praise him. He did it so you'd praise God. Wouldn't it be nice to walk down the streets of Bandera, Kerrville, Hondo, Bernie, even San Antonio, and hear the name Riding the River Cowboy Fellowship? They're doing something out there. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Well, I'm going to tell you, last, boy, isn't that the word you want to hear the preacher say to last you are in the position to change your world you have the ability do you believe it do you believe it do you believe it enough to put into action what you know in your heart God wants you to do do you believe it that much? You can make a difference. You can change the world. You change the world one person at a time, don't you? We got all kinds of excuses. I got all, all kinds of excuses. But God just wants you to tell other people about him and how he changed your life. A while ago when I asked you to raise your hand if you wanted to see God double us in size, you wanted to see a thousand people in there, wanted to have, have to build on again, nearly everyone in here raised your hand. It's not hard, folks. 
I don't know how many is here today. Anybody count? Bubba, does anybody count? Do you know? Uh, who? How many? 330 people here today. And we know there are a bunch of them over at Comfort representing this place in a roping, don't we? But if the 330 that are here, if we want to double next week, then what do we have to do? Each one of you just has to bring one. Man, that ain't hard, is it? That is not a hard assignment. Not a hard assignment. It's not if you trust the Lord. If you do what you know in your heart God has called you to do. If you make it your goal this week to say, you know what, I, that stinking brother Joel, he... He kept talking about bring one more, bring one with you, and we could double in size. And I'm going to tell you, Joel ain't going to remind you, but God is. He's going to remind you every day next week, I have an assignment to bring somebody to church. And guess what? Maybe God will bring them to Christ. Maybe their life will be changed. I'm going to tell you, that is going to come to your mind. I promise you. I promise you, you do with it whatever you want. You do with it whatever you're big enough to do, but I'm telling you, God's big enough to fulfill it. He's big enough to do it. Paul accused of turning his world upside down. Really, God bringing it right side up. I have another scripture I want to share with you. I almost forgot, John. Over in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 says, So we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard, or we may drift away from it. For the message God delivered through the angels has always stood firm and every violation of the law and every act of disobedience punished. So what makes us think we can escape if we ignore this great salvation that was first announced by the Lord Jesus Christ himself and delivered to those who heard him speak. You see, it ain't Joel Sanders talking to you. It's the Lord. I'm going to date myself again. Many of you remember Paul Harvey. Yeah. The farmer. I wish I could I wish I could say this. Had that memorized and could say it, but I can't. But he always said the rest of the story. Now here's the rest of the story. God called me into the ministry. Turned my world upside down or 180 degrees. Turned it. Changed my wife's life. Changed my kid's life. Changed my dad's life. But I'm going to tell you, my dad got all right. My dad uh, went with me and led the singing and a couple of revivals I got to preach. I had the privilege uh, to go to Arkansas and pastor my first church. And while I was up there, I preached about 20, 25 revivals. Oklahoma and all across northwest Arkansas. I don't know what happened with those people. But I promise you God does. And I know my life was changed because of his obedience. I have had some of you come up and hug my neck and say, Brother Joel, thank you for that word today. I'm going to tell you, I always say, and I hope I never forget to say, thank you, 
But I'm telling you, it's God who does it. You see, God wants you to be a willing servant. And He wants so much to use you today. Let's go to Him in prayer. Lord, we thank You. We thank You that You allowed us to gather here today. And we thank You for Your Holy Spirit who is moving in our midst. And Lord, changing lives one at a time. Lord, I pray right now, God, as You continue to move, that if there be someone here, that has never given their heart and their life to you, that right where they sit right now, they say, Lord, today I realize that I'm a sinner. Because the scriptures have been open to me, I understand that you died in my place. Forgive me for my sin and come into my life and save me. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters all over this room, Lord, that your spirit has has prompted them to say, you know what, I'm going to go out and I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something for the Lord this week. I'm going to try to bring somebody back with me next week. I'm going to tell somebody how God changed my life. I'm going to try to get my, right, my world right side up for the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's in His name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being here today. Uh, come back next week. and uh, I, One of the real preachers will be here, I guess. Jeff coming back? <laughs> Jeff will be here. Uh, uh, Y'all come back. Love you guys. Thank you for letting me be here. <laughs>